now for our story. It was a pleasant Sunday afternoon. After church, Aunt Mary had stopped in at David Bowman's, where she was to be met later by Del Shipley and driven back to the farm. At David's, Aunt Mary had found Bill Mead. After they all chatted a while, she said goodbye to David, and she and Bill, who was leaving too, had strolled out through the garden. Now they have paused by the gate. Mm, Mr. Bowman has a lovely garden, hasn't he, Aunt Mary? Yes, indeed. <laughs> Isn't that a something funny? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Seeing David's garden reminds me of the little rivalry he and Lefty have over their delphinium. <laughs> They're both pretty cute. <laughs> <laughs> well, are they going to be competitors in the flower show? Well, we're trying to persuade Lefty to enter, but I don't know if we'll succeed. Well, Lefty's quite a gardener. <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, it's almost time for Dell to be coming along. Well, I wish you didn't have to go, Aunt Mary. Oh, yes, so do I. My, it's a lovely day, isn't it? Ah, yeah. The kind of day that makes you want to go places you've never been before. I know what you mean. Hmm. I gave in to a little wanderlust feeling this morning. Now I feel guilty wondering how my family got along without me. They'll probably be fainting with hunger by the time I get home. Oh, I wouldn't worry. <laughs> Maybe you ought to go on strike once a week and let somebody else do the cooking. Oh, I don't mind, really. In fact, I enjoy it. Besides, you know, Peggy always helps out. Well, good for her. But I think she ought to have a little time to herself. Have some fun. She went to church with Jane Plummer this morning, looking pretty as a picture. Well, she always does to me. Yes. <laughs> Randy teases her. He calls her Miss Glamour Puss of 1946. <laughs> <laughs> Randy. Now, he's more like a brother to her than a cousin. Oh, yes, always has been. <laughs> they used to scrap like brother and sister, too, when they were youngsters. Yeah, I'll bet they did. <laughs> and Peggy probably held her own, yes, too. she did. <laughs> when she makes up her mind about something, she doesn't give in any too easily, you know. Yes, I do know. I, um, guess she probably told you about us, didn't she, Aunt Mary? Yes, Bill. We had a long talk. It was the night after you'd been there for dinner. Hmm. Yeah, I thought she'd want to talk it over with you. She told me the whole story. I think you know how I feel about it, Bill. And I appreciate it, too, Aunt Mary. You've been absolutely fair. Well, so has Peggy, for that matter. She's tried to be fair, Bill. I think she's done what seemed right to her. Well, I couldn't ask for more than that. No. Well, ever since I was able to make it clear to her why I'd behaved the way I did while Kit was away in California, she's been wonderfully kind and sympathetic. It helped a lot, too. Mm, I'm sure it did. Of course, when Kit finally agreed to the divorce, I guess I made an awful mistake. How do you mean, Bill? Well, I, I couldn't help hoping somehow that but Peggy and I might get back to where we were before. Before Kit and I were married. But I realized the other night how foolish I'd been to think it would work out. Not foolish exactly, Bill. Perhaps unduly hopeful. Yeah. A guy gets to kidding himself. Convincing himself that what he wants to happen is gonna happen. That's why I made my big mistake. I should have known I couldn't expect Peggy to consider making a life with me as long as I hope to get custody of my kid. Not when Kit's his mother. It would be very difficult. It's only natural that Peggy can't forget how much unhappiness she went through because of Kit. Sure, I realize that. As she explained it to me, Peggy's afraid she couldn't be fair to your child, knowing he's Kit's child, too. I understand how she feels. But on the other hand, you get my angle of it, too, don't you, Aunt Mary? I believe I do, Bill. He's my son. I can't just forget about him, walk off and leave him. Not when I know how Ben Calvert would bring him up. I'm afraid that uh, Ben would bring your child up to believe the way he does. Hmm. And that's not the way I want it. Peggy understands that, Bill. And she respects you for it. Yeah. Yeah, even if it makes all the difference in the world to us personally. But the only thing I can see myself clear to do is to try to get custody of him. I wouldn't feel right if I didn't. No. No, you wouldn't. It's put me in a terrible spot, though, Anne Mary. Now that I know Peggy does love me, well, knowing that if it weren't for the baby, for my son, everything would be so different. But I had to tell Peggy. It would have been wrong not to tell her I want the baby. Yes, Bill, you you had to be honest with her. Oh, here's Dale. All ready, Mary? Yes, I am. Bill, you remember Dale Shipley. Oh, yeah, sure. Well, why don't you walk out and say hello? Oh, okay. I hope I don't 
why I didn't hold you up, Mary. Lily and I got to talking. Well, you're right on the dot. Well, you remember Bill Mead. Bill? Why, yes, I sure do. <laughs> well, how are you, Bill? Fine, thanks. Uh, you're down from Chicago for the weekend, huh, Miss Shipley? <laughs> yeah, having a fine time, too. But don't call me Mrs. Shipley, Bill. Everybody calls me Dell. Oh, well, fine. That's a nice name. I didn't recognize you at first. You were in G.I.'s the last time I saw you. <laughs> yeah, that's right, I was. Yeah, well, I've, I've been in civilian clothes for some time now. Yeah, it took me quite a while to get used to them, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't wonder. I was packing Randy's things away, and my goodness, those uniforms are heavy. Especially the winter ones. Yeah, well, they have to be. They're, uh, they're built to take a lot of wear and tear. Um, say, uh, look, if I've interrupted you two, well, I can come back later, Mary. Oh, no. My goodness, I, I just thought... Well, what's the matter? Forget something? Yes, yes, I did. Sarah wrapped up a piece of cake for Randy. You know, he's a great pet of hers. And I left it in David's kitchen. Oh, uh, let me go back and get it for you. Oh, no, no, Bill. You stay here and talk today. I'll be just a minute. Why, well, it would break Sarah's heart if I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Aunt Mary, God bless her. Well, Bill, it's been a long time since I saw you. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you haven't been down here much, have you? No, I haven't. Well, I guess they keep you pretty busy up in the big city. Are you still running that nightclub? Uh, the Golden Pheasant? <laughs> golden Peacock. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, Peggy used to talk about it a lot. And I always thought I'd like to get up to Chicago and drop in sometime. Why don't you? You're always welcome, Bill. Everything will be on the house, too. <laughs> well, that's a dangerous offer. I might take you up on it one of these days. <laughs> well, glad to have you. Say, uh, by the way, I understand congratulations are in order. Yeah, I guess so. Too bad about your marriage busting up, but I understand you got a swell youngster. Yeah, he's quite a guy. See much of him? No, I don't. Now, that's the tough part of it. You probably know that Kit, uh, my uh, ex-wife, got custody of the baby. Yeah. That's what I heard. Mm. So I don't get to see him very often. I kind of keep tabs on him, though. See, they've got this nurse taking care of him, and I run into her ever so often. She tells me I was getting along. Aunt Mary says he's just about the best-looking child she's ever seen. And I know she wouldn't exaggerate. <laughs> well, he looks awful good to me. But then I've always been afraid I was a little bit prejudiced. <laughs> you know, the proud papa. <laughs> Not if Mary says so, too. She's a good judge, I'd say. Wish I could see him sometime, Bill. Yeah, I wish you could, too. Well, I know how it is, though. Say, you must have a picture of him. If you haven't, you're the first fond parent I ever met who didn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure, I got a picture. It's just a snapshot his nurse took, but it's a good likeness. Well, dig it out and let's give a look, huh? <laughs> okay. You asked for it, you know. I got it here in my wallet. Yeah. There's a little monkey. Oh, my Lord, he does look like... He's a pretty handsome young man for his age. I might as well admit I think so. <laughs> I guess if people didn't react as if they were impressed, I'd be kind of disappointed. Well, I'm impressed all right, Bill. As Del Shipley studied the snapshot... She felt as though she were looking into the face of Lisa Fenner. The child was so remarkably like her. Now, Dell knew the link she'd seen connecting Lisa Fenner with Wakefield was no imaginary one. This child was Lisa's child. The baby son Lisa had relinquished to a woman she refused to name. Dell knew who that woman was now. It was Kip Mead. How could she help Aunt Mary to straighten out this tangle, Dell wondered, in time to save Aunt Mary's niece Peggy from marrying a man she didn't love and restore Lisa's child to its rightful mother. 